The Raptors with a huge comeback win, 111-107 over, over the Washington Wizards. Welcome to Raptors tonight. Live from Real Sports, I'm Randy Urban, joined by Javon Shepard, Sherman Hamilton, and Alvin Williams. And a special guest for tonight, assistant coach Gemma Malalela. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good, man. Hey, appreciate you being here. You know these guys? Uh, there's some basketball royalty here. I know these guys. I play basketball with him a lot. Really? Uh, I beat him one-on-one -on -one a lot. Uh, he beats me every time. And Sherm's just the man. So Sherm, he plays <laughs> You played out one-on-one? Yeah, yes. <laughs> you said he beat, is that real? Yeah, it's real. Oh, God. Definitely real. We really? played. 100% real. Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know about what he said, the okay. results and all that, but I let him live. <laughs> the ones that he won, he just kind of, he found a way to cheat, like old NBA Wally. Right, right, right. Cheat, yeah. but yeah. I found a way to win. Old man game, that, that exists. Felt like uh, the Raptors needed a little bit of that today. Uh, that was an interesting one. Uh, what are you thinking during something like that, during a game like that? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I think the NBA is a really crazy league and like a lot of crazy things happen. You see Washington's record for the last few days, like they've lost a few like this now, so yeah. it happens. And we did the same thing with the Spurs, right? Like a good comeback. Um, I think that you can never give up in the NBA. No matter what the score is, no matter what's happening. The coach said to give a really good message to the guys at halftime. I said, listen, it's not about winning the game now or not. It's about showing some force, showing some effort, showing some fight. And if you do that, then you have a chance to win. I think that's what our guys did tonight. Yeah. Jamal, were you surprised at the start you had? I know you're coming off of a long road trip and that first game back is like the last game of the road trip a lot of times, but were you surprised that it took that long to get the legs under you guys? Yeah, you know, I think going in, we all thought we were going to have a bit more pop, right? Like we kind of, we had a day off yesterday after the long trip. Today we came in with this late shoot around idea, so we did come in in the morning, gave the guys a bit more rest. Um, but sometimes it's just, you're going to have some lag no matter what no matter what happens, right? So I think the first game back after a long trip is always a trap game, um, but I just thought we'd get going a little bit quicker than we did. <laughs> Um, you guys end the game with, with Malachi on the court and Chris, who obviously brought a lot of energy. What's the conversations there amongst the coaches going in, you know, in the late part, latter part of the fourth quarter? So I think today was, was interesting with Malachi. He brought a lot of energy, and I think it actually helped Dennis a lot. We went with a small double guard lineup, first time we've done it all season, of having Malachi and Dennis out there together. And I think it gives them both some relief, right? They're on the ball a little bit less. Um, they, they have more ability to sort of play off the ball then, right? And they spell each other off. And I thought Malachi's energy really changed things around. Um, and I think playing that smaller lineup, especially for their smaller lineup, was something that was really good for us. I thought it was going to be Malachi, Dennis, and Al, the way things were going <laughs> there for a while. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to make him laugh. <laughs> I mean, it's not. If, it, if it's funny, I'll laugh. <laughs> if it ain't funny, there's no reason to laugh. I just want to go back to what you said about the travel and the first game back after a road trip. Is that a real thing? You're not playing, but you feel the, the effects of those things. Is that a real thing? Explain that. Like, no, how no do you question. Feel? Like, like, just the, the up and down on airplanes, the yeah. living in hotels, the sort of being out of your rhythm, it affects you. Right. And it likes for coaches. Like, so I can only imagine how hard it is for a player to sort of go through that same rigmarole and pack your bags, unpack your bags, go yeah. here, go there, do this, do that. I mean, there's so many nights you wake up, you're not sure what city you're in. You're like, yeah. where am I? What am yeah. I doing? And so to come back and try to get readjusted is, is something that's challenging and hard, uh, and I think it does impact you. What, when Pascal's going like that, do you guys, uh, you know, you're helping run the offense here, do you guys go away from some of the systems and just say go to work, or how does that conversation go? I mean, the difference was our defense, right? I think our, our offense is always predicated on our defense. In the second half, we actually started ball pressuring more. We actually started causing turnovers. And that got Pascal going more than just sort of the post-up stuff. Yeah. The post-up stuff was a result of our defense. That's what started him. And then, then once he had a rhythm, now we just kind of, kind of feed the beast, right. give it to him down low and let him go to work. Especially they put Jones and some smaller bodies in him that allowed us to get there. John, I thought it was interesting that when Tyus Jones wasn't on the floor in the fourth quarter, you guys really put some pressure on him without a ball handler. And it kind of, to your point, the defensive flow changed in that fourth quarter. When you have a game in control like that, how do you consistently, not foul, because you don't want the clock stop for him to come in the game, but you also have to keep that pressure at a very high, consistent level. Yeah, I think that's where, where I think even Chris, he wasn't on the ball, but behind the ball. Yep. Like, I think it gave people confidence. And they're like, okay, someone's behind me today. So Chris is really being a good job rim protecting, which means I can pressure up more for Malachi, for Dennis, for those guys. Even Scotty. Scotty did a great job on the ball today. And I think the confidence of knowing Chris was there to help you, allow them to do it, do it with energy. Right. And that changes the flow. Like, you guys know, like, when someone's guarding you like that, up and down sure. the floor, it's difficult. Jama, give us, give us an idea, because there's this narrative that this .5 offense is. There, everybody's looking for this new science behind an offense, but it, it's concept. So just give us some insight into what this is. 
I mean, I think like Coach Darko has this great background of like different experiences and different ways of playing the game of basketball. Some of the European stuff, all the ways that Memphis has played, but also his history with the Spurs or the OKC. And there's no there's no rocket science. There's no brand new plays in basketball. We've all seen everything a bunch of times. It's just can you what can you do consistently? And I think one is can we push the ball offensively fast? Can we increase our pace? That's part one. And then two, can we just play from different spots? So this year's team is trying to play more from the elbows than last year's team would have been, kind of facilitating things a bit more off the ball and ball movement versus pick and roll basketball. Uh, we're going to get to pick and rolls a ton. Uh, obviously, that's a huge part of basketball still. Mm -hmm. But it's just those, those subtle shifts. It's maybe a 10% shift from what other teams are doing. Um, but it's all about personnel and putting the right pieces in the right places for our basketball and our offense to be effective. We've heard pace a number of times. Is that an encouragement to play faster? Or you know, what, are you, what are you looking for there? Yeah, I mean, I think it's getting into your offense faster versus playing faster. So, yeah. like, earlier drags up the floor. Like, I think some of the time when, like, when Dennis is bringing the ball or Malachi is bringing the ball, can we get to our first action faster? Right. Can we set that first screen faster? Can we get the first DHO faster? Um, and that then creates the opportunity for us to then move the pieces more and more, right? I think all of it's about, and we all know this, about creating an advantage. Mm -hmm. So how do you create an advantage? And if you can create it sooner, then you can keep that advantage for longer in the possession. Let, let's talk a little bit more holistically about you. Um, What's it like being back, second stint here with the Raptors after your, your, your stay with Golden State? Man, you know what, it's, it's I've just seeing all these familiar faces, like these guys, I've journeyed with all you guys a lot in my life, and I think to be back here and back in this environment, uh, for my family to be in a comfortable place and be back home and be able to see their family and their friends all the time, it's special. Yeah. Um, I feel really, really blessed that I'm able to do my job uh, in my home city. And a lot of coaches that I talk to don't have that opportunity, have never had that opportunity. I've had it for a lot of my career. So I'm incredibly thankful, and like Toronto's such an amazing place. Even being back today, after being gone for three weeks, it felt like, and like just the energy and like seeing all those people and people that care so passionately, man, it's really cool. What, what, what did you learn? Like, what was the most important thing you think you took away from that, that time in the state? You won a championship, you've got two championships now, which is more than he's got and I've got. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> It's true, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, you know, I think the Warriors are interesting because, firstly, Steph, like, I mean, he just yeah. he goes without saying, but it needs to be said. Yeah. The guy is incredible. And I think for me as a coach to learn from him, I remember it was my first day uh, I started. And so you walk into the gym and you're nervous as a coach too. Like you're walking into a new environment. They got all these all-stars and all this championship pedigree. And Steph is doing a workout and I kind of walk on the floor. He stops his workout and comes directly over to me. Knew me by name already, had never met me yet, but knew me by name. Mm -hmm. Hey, Coach Jamo, so happy to have you here. This is great. Let's get our families together, like right off the jump. Yeah. That's different. That's yeah. world class. Like the guy is really, really special. And then Steve, uh, Steve Kerr is, as we know, one of the top coaches in the universe um, and being able to learn from him and, and, and really soak up the way that he comes to work every day. Mm -hmm. He talks about joy a lot, but he lives that. Um, and I learned for two years, I got to do it. And I'm really thankful and I've learned a lot, which has been great. Real quick, Steph did know you. I called him and let him know you were coming. I said, anytime <laughs> you're lacking in confidence, ask him to play one-on-one, -on -one, he'll be a crash test dummy. So that was, that was you know, that's why he did that. You know, I appreciate you. Yeah, you no, no doubt, man. Out, man. man. From afar, man, from afar. I ain't forget you. about you. <laughs> Um, I, wa I want to talk about this real quick. You, you graduated from UBC in 2004, not to give away your age, but I did, kinesiology degree. Um, and then there's an award created in your honor. Um, I'll read it here. Recognizes- It's not good for Alvin to know this stuff, but go ahead. Excellence in the areas of selflessness, dedication, leadership and spirit. Are they sure they got the right guy? Wow. No, wrong. <laughs> just kidding. Well, they definitely, I'm it wasn't kidding. for Alvin. I know that with all those different categories. I know that much for sure, but. No. Yeah, no, <laughs> to be, to be, I'm just kidding. Honestly, you're the most selfless, dedicated, leadership -y, spirited person leadership -y. I, I think I've ever You're losing <laughs> all credibility <laughs> no, right now. First of all, you're no. reading everything you're talking about. Like, credibility e, e. e. No, no, leadership -y, I said. Leadership -y. I'm making up leadership -y. words. What is that? I'm leadership -y. saying, you are this person. Tell me about this award. How did this come about and, and like? I think that they, that I've worked so hard and like I just grinded for so long. They're like, yeah. none of the real awards they could give to me. They're like, we can't give them any real awards. Let's create some funny one that we can give them on the side because he's worked so hard for so many years. That's all it was. Well, they've only given it to six people since 2004. No one else is silly enough to work as hard as I was is doing. That, I guess I don't know what it was. I'm not sure. Should we do something like that here? We could do the Alvin Williams Award. We could find a way to do that. Leave me out of that. <laughs> um, you initially wanted to be a gym teacher, history teacher. When did you start to say NBA coach? Like that, that, those are two things that are not really, that's a big jump. Yeah, it was, it was huge. So um, I, I love people and yeah. I love teaching. 
and that was my passion. So coming out through high school and university, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I wanted to teach phys ed, I wanted to teach history, just like you said. And that was gonna be a wonderful pathway for me, and it was gonna be able to provide a way to help people. I think for all the teachers out there, like the work you do, the service is incredible. You're helping so many young people. And for yeah. me, I want to see representation. I was like, can I see a black teacher in the Toronto school system that helped me, and can I be that person for that for other people, right? That was my motivation. And then I went to UBC and I played and, and you know, coming out of that experience, I realized that, hey, I'm probably not gonna play in the NBA. I know I'm not good enough for that, but I still had this teaching dream. Then I went to, uh, my, did my teacher's college here at U of T in Toronto. Yeah. And in that experience, I went to University of Toronto and coached with Mike Cates and all those guys and had a really good experience with them. And that sort of got me into the, the coaching world. Um, and I think then it was just small steps over time to really take this journey from switching from being a teacher to now being more of a basketball coach. It's funny, actually, me and Alvin were joking, but like in those earlier years when I was starting with the organization that he was playing, he'd take me under his wing and like we'd mess around and we'd play a little bit and, and, and but I'd come to practices and Sam Mitchell would have me at practices and I was learning the craft I was learning what this was really about and in that transition I was like this this means a lot to me and I can do the same thing I can still help people impact people and be passionate for people in the sport of basketball there's there's a lot of coaches that probably aspire you know young coaches that aspire to be at the NBA level and it's a small market what advice would you give to some of those coaches out there in Canada yeah, I mean, firstly, I think we have a great set of coaches already, right? Mm -hmm. If you look across our university system and you look at some of the coaches that are really come, on the come up right now, like there's some really quality coaches. Look at our national team and some of the work that's happening there. Mm -hmm. So the work is already being done. I think the challenge for how to get to the NBA, that's sort of the secret sauce, right? Yeah. And to me, there's no, there's no singular way that that happens. I truly think everyone has their own journey, their own, their own voyage, their own way that they make it happen. But all of it, I think, does come down to you need to have some good relationships mm -hmm. along that pathway. So if you were a former player, if you are a coach who's coached for 20 years, somewhere else you're trying to get in coach in Europe whatever your sort of thing is if you don't have relationships and, and a way to relate to people the NBA is long 82 games is a grind yeah. if you can't figure out how to navigate people for 82 games you're not gonna make it so that's a big part of it do you ever uh, sit back and just go you know I born in Swaziland and now I'm here on the biggest stage of the best players in the world and just go this is crazy the way the world works and how things happen do you ever reflect like that and I mean I think I mean, I've always lived my life being really thankful for everything I've had, but that's at every phase. Like, I remember when I was working the community program for the Raptors, I was driving this Jam Van purple truck. Remember that purple truck? Yep. I'd drive that thing around. <laughs> I was really thankful for that yeah. and really appreciative and felt like I'm in a really special place that I get to do this. And at each phase, wherever you're doing, I think that's a, what you have to do. You gotta be thankful and appreciative for everything you have. And as my, my career has continued and like going back home, like going, like, you know, we go back in the summers all the time and going yeah. back to the continent or going back to Swaziland and seeing people there being like, coach, whoa, you're doing, and I'm like, that, gives me a bit of perspective, yeah. but I think you just take, take every day as it comes and just work as hard as you can, be as positive as you can, rock out from there. Gentlemen, which championship meant more? I'm not looking at you when you answer. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Raptor championship, of course. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not even, come on now. Yeah, all right. Obviously. Yeah, all right. Gemma, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, round of applause for assistant coach Gemma Malalela. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Gemma. Always. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My Trish. man. Oh, should I see you out or you know how to get out? You're okay? All right. You can navigate your way. Appreciate you. Yeah. Appreciate everybody. All right, bud. All right. All right. Um, all right. Uh, I want to ask you guys this as players, the former players. Do you sometimes look at the, the record and play the record? Does that happen? You say, you know, one of these guys are two and seven. It's not supposed to be good. And then you kind of let up. I think you always, like, sometimes when you go into games and you, see, you feel like you're playing against a lesser opponent, you play, you play down, <laughs> Jam. You play down to your opponent. Um, and that's, that's the difference between, you know, teams that are growing and developing and really good teams that go into every game and play up to their level. So I, I think it's always, that's always going to be the case. Um, and if you can turn that switch, right, then you have something. Did you do that? Did you feel that, that, that sort of inclination to kind of play like, yeah. down? It's, it's not that you play down, you just don't play with the same type of focus. Right. Um, you think you can turn it on at any time. I've never been on a team that's been that good. So it's always been like, you, you gotta fight, 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 you still gotta play hard. But even the good teams, like if you look at like Golden State Warriors. <laughs> you ever been right? on a team that was that good? <laughs> so you want me to answer the question or what? <laughs> Get yes. after him, man. This guy, Get after this him. guy is unbelievable, <laughs> man. He's fierce today. Get after him. Like if you, like if you look at Golden State, yeah. they were really, really, really good. They had games where 
they'll be down all game, and then the last two minutes they'll turn it on, hit five threes, and like teams do that. But the better teams, they can overcome it. Right. And like, it's, it's just natural. It's natural that sometimes you look at a team, it's like they're not supposed to be that good. They aren't that good, whether it's their record or the talent level. And players, you know, they don't come to the game with that same type of focus and urgency. Yeah. Sure. It, it took a little bit to get some stops. But the Raptors go on a 22 to run run in the fourth quarter. Get those stops. What changed? For some reason, Tyus Jones wasn't in the game. And I thought they put a lot, they extended their pressure. I mean, when you have guys like Adviva Adviva are handling the ball, you have, you know, Kyle Kuzma bring the ball up. You can put pressure on these people and yeah. make sure that they have to turn. And they're not going to find the pass as quickly as Tyus Jones would. And I thought the timing was perfect. And because there was no stoppage in the time in the clock, there was no chance to get them in the game. So they had multiple possessions where the pressure was on. They turned them over. They were able to score in those situations. And now that gap got smaller. But to me, that was a crucial part of the game. And I was surprised that there wasn't a timeout called. And Tyus Jones put back in the game to handle that pressure. Because when he came in, first possession, accepted a double team, dropped it off. And one. And it was and a one, pass yeah. for an and one. I think to, to Sherm's point as well is that Chris Boucher came in on that backside. And he gave a lot of energy from the help side, right? Contesting shots, diving on loose balls. And you got to commend him because he's coming to this, this season and probably thought he should play a bit more, right? A couple of DMP CDs, but every time he's come out, he's come with some energy. Mm -hmm. And even Malachi Flynn, he really sat down tonight and defended. And late in the game, they were picking him out and trying to attack him. He was, he was containing, right? And in those situations, that's exactly what you want. And Chris on the backside, you're getting deflections, you're getting out and you're running. And then when you start to do that, turn over, you know, turn over a team, you get on a run, you make this attract me, you have two, three guys on the perimeter that can run and finish. So that was that was a difference maker. Those Boucher buckets uh, in transition, the blocks, he, he was he was a big key. Yeah, he he's he's really doing a good job anchoring that defense. And you know, Coach Jama said it, when you have a guy back there who can clean some stuff up. Mm -hmm. You can press up a press lot. Up. You can get into yeah. people. And I thought they, they fed into that. But to me, the impressive part is he's back there defending. Then the ball pops loose, and he's out on press the wing. Him, yeah. <laughs> and he's running the floor, and he's, he's laying it in under dunking. I mean, mm. that type of energy on both sides of the basketball, mm. in games like this when you're down 23 and you can't really muster up the energy, mm. those plays are huge mm. to play that type of basketball on both sides. Mm. Okay, I uh, want to pause it there for a sec. It's uh, time for our fan of the night. So give a round of applause, everybody, for Vinesh Bihari, our fan of the night. Come on in here, Vinesh. I'll get you, get you set up. Hold on. Don't try to jump that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? You might have to Thank jump you. it. That's what I'm doing. All right. How you guys doing? What's up, man? How are you, How are you man? Going, man? Hey, what's going on, man? Nice to meet you. Air boss? Yeah. Do you have a, here's a, here, use your mic. Do you have a question or a comment for the guys? Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask, like, what are your guys' thoughts of Brady Dick this season and in this game? Great question. I, I played think, well today. Yeah, he played well with Grady. I mean, there's going to be a lot for him to learn. You can see he got better over the course of the game. Just has to get stronger. Um, but I think he's probably a little better than we anticipated in terms of he's not just a shooter, right? He can move his feet. And there's been times where he surprised me being able to make plays off of the bounce, right? Not more than he's not going more than two, three dribbles. But the fact that the game can slow down enough for him that he can make the right play. I think with any rookie, you're going to have highs, you're going to have lows, but they got to just continue to put the work in so that, you know, in year two, in year three, in year four, they're playing up to their ceiling. I think it's important, like, interesting and, and important for a coach to be the way Darko has been with him because, you know, he hasn't, he didn't come in shooting the ball great over the last little while, but Coach Darko keeps sticking with him. You know, that means a lot when your coach is, has that kind of faith in you, right? Yeah, it, it, but it's similar. It goes with what Javon said. He does other things. Right? If you come in with this, the rep of shooting and that's not going well, then you're shortening your leash, yeah. right? So he does a lot of other things. He moves really well without the basketball. I think he's a perfect fit for the offense, the read and react offense. He has a awareness. Tonight he did a really good job crashing the offensive board, bringing the energy that the team needed in the first half when they were really down. So he's doing a good job. I and mean, like, like Javon said, he's going to have his ups and downs. And it's just about being patient and making sure he learns every night out. I really like the fact that he seems to play the game like he knows what he doesn't know. You know what I mean? He's not trying to do anything that he can't really do. So that 
builds trust in the coaching staff, and that also gives him extended minutes out there because he's not making mistakes out of, I just want to try stuff. He's making effort mistakes, and coaches can live with that. And as he continues to grow, he's going to get more opportunities. But he does a good job as kind of what they call staying in your lane, not trying to overstep your opportunity. And to me, that says a lot about his maturity. And he's fearless. Like, he, yeah. he's yeah, not shying. Sure, he's yeah. not shying away from any situation. Like, you know what I mean? So that's always good. All right, Vanessa, you want to uh, spin for a chance to win a prize? Yeah, we got to sure. make the spin. shot, too, though. <laughs> you got to spin first. Spin first. All right. So get to the get to the wheel. Give it a good spin, though. None, none of these like weak spins that Alvin does. This is a good one. What do we got here? What do we got here? There's two apps on there. Two tickets. Entrees. T-shirt. Bag. Okay. Bag's good. Bag's good. But you got to make the shot first. Okay. Okay. Here's a line. It's not that hard. That's not hard. You could probably dunk that. Oh, he's, he's focused. Hey, all right, all right. Where's the bag here? Here we go, Vanesh. Come on over here, bud. Show this. It's a Raptor bag, little uh, little logo there. I love it. Yeah, okay. all right. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Nice, Good job. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Thanks for doing that. All right. Vanesh, like it. I like it. All right. One more question. A couple more questions, fellas. Uh, Pascal, 39, 11, and 7. Some games he's 15, seven. Can he sustain this type of production? Maybe not 37, but he can be a little bit more in this range, right? Al? Can he sustain what not range? Not 37, but you know, where he was last year. Yeah, but, but it's a different offense and it's a different outlook and it's responsibility. Big cat. Big cat. <laughs> It's the responsibility, like that, he doesn't have the same expectations and 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 role that he had last year with the team. So when you're dealing with an offense that it's a pass, it's a re-react, it's, it's certain things, it's different players that have different roles and different positions on the floor. You can't expect someone to get that volume, right? A good that style of play. Now, I think it's up to the coaching staff and the players to come together and find that balance because you're going to need him to have big opportunities and big nights. But at the end of the day, you can't, the offense is not set up for him to be the leading scorer every night. It's just not. You got Scotty, you got OG, you got Dennis, you got guys like that can also, you know, get their game going in that offense. But I do believe if you are designing a play and as he grows and figure out where he can cut, timely cuts, different positions on the floor and maximize those opportunities, then he will be that guy for the team. Okay, guys, great stuff. Going to stop it there. Next game for the Raptors, Wednesday night against Milwaukee Bucks. Tip-off at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. After the game, come on by Real Sports. Be a part of the show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Hey, dog, Appreciate keep my name out your mouth regarding <laughs> with the guest spins and all that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>